All right, so this video is going to be uh, a follow-up or sort of a redo on um, the helmet strap system. So we did it all at, or oh, I did it at this kind of level just to show what a basic one can kind of look like. Um, I mentioned in the video, you know, we should be modeling up our own buckles. Uh, they should join together properly as real straps do. Um, you know, maybe this is more suited for one of those... Um, like skateboarding helmets as opposed to like a road bike helmet, but it doesn't really matter. Either way, what we're going to do is what we should all be doing um, when it comes to CAD and advanced CAD, and that is redoing certain things. So by redoing it, um, we can have a better look at what's out there. We know the basic sort of practices uh, that are involved. So, you know, we're still going to be doing straps along the face like that. It's still going to a buckle. Um, but we want to try and make it more of our own and a bit sort of higher quality and include other details within the helmet. Um, so I just had a quick look on, you know, Google search. Um, and we can see, you know, we've got how the two, like they're quite two, two quite distinct straps come join at the one point and then go down from here. Um, we've got the addition of these kind of, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, like the rear strap head holstery type thing that grips onto the back of the head that's generally adjustable. Um, so these are quite actually kind of complex. Um, so we'll look at maybe some simple ways of modeling these up. Um, and then how some of these straps actually join up to the top. Um, we find we generally have these bigger plastic elements as opposed to just basic pins um, so where the strap goes it kind of goes through a little section of the helmet and it's clipped on from either side or something like that I don't actually have that much experience with helmets um, and there's also this padding that we see on the insides of a lot of helmets um, we want to try and show that off in some way you know I don't know if we want to show off stickers but um, at least getting some padding going and then yeah however these might hook into the main body. Um, there's levels of detail there that you could go into. Um, yeah, and then, you know, how do we model up something like this? So the, the basic side strap part of it isn't too crazy, um, but then when we start to move into like a whole actual headpiece, um, it can get quite complex. And again, this is that type of little um, plastic bit there. So, um, so one like this where it's quite thin and just has a smaller bit there for adjustment we can easily work with. Um, so what we'll do, I'll go about, you know, first off deleting all this. I've got a backup of this, so it's not a problem to delete all those steps. Um, and I'm going to really quickly just sort of make my own uh, buckle that's kind of like a real buckle but at this point I'm just going to really make something in the general sort of shape um, that maybe brings in some more elements of this and I'm also going to position it up and across on the chin a bit more just because um, that is generally where a buckle will rest on a person so you know we can just go through and hide pretty much everything and if I want to make a buckle in free form um, We can just go ahead and start from the front. I'm going to make it roughly the same sort of shape and size as this. Um, and again, I don't know why my default color keeps coming up as green. It doesn't really matter. Um, you know, that's fine for now. I'm not too fast. Um, and I'm just going to kind of... Yeah, if these are side by side, I can see that, oops, roughly the same sort of shape and size. Oh, that actually came out really close, which is great. Um, so I can just move it off to the side and use this sort of wireframe figure as a bit of a reference. Um, so we know it has to have somewhere where it can actually go through here. Um, so what I might actually do is, um, use the subdivide command on this surface or all of these surfaces uh, to actually break it up some more to give us some options where we can delete and continue through um, so i can do it like that for now oh, that one didn't really work did it 
um, divide that up bottom there and we can see our shapes a bit more rigid up here um, and what we can do is I might actually should I turn on some symmetry no I won't turn on any symmetry at the moment um, so something like this you just want to make sure you're mirroring stuff from top to bottom um, if you need to be so let's just go 0 0.75 on that um, just because we're going to be deleting some faces and sometimes fusion and freeform likes to kind of freak out when you delete faces of things that are mirrored um, so we can delete from there to there delete there to there and start to see what happens when we bridge these together um, so obviously we've got to run bridge Oops. That's going to try and figure out how to bridge these together. Um, personally, I don't think we're asking too much of it. Uh, there we go. So, you know, that's bridged. Um, obviously, we can go into huge detail on this and actually make it really cool. So, you know, just simple stuff. Um, you know what? I might actually mirror it from this side to this side because that will actually be symmetrical. So we can do that. And that way we can get in and modify this a bit better. Um, so we can push that out, something like that. We probably want these outer edges to be, um, what do we call them? We want these outer edges probably to be creased as well. Um, this is just going to help us make it neat and tidy as we like to do. So by going through and making all of these creased, we'll actually be able to control our shape a lot better. Um, and we can go in and run these fillets on the end. Um, so, you know, obviously I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of detail on this. Um, it is pretty sort of general. Um, and this one, we, we want like a bottom section to come across. So we need like a really big cutout on that one. Um, so it might even be worth dragging this whole part out and making that in line with the other side so that pinches in less. Um, so yeah, to make that, we want to hole up here, hold down on this bottom section there and there um, and sort of bridge that all up. So this might get a bit messy, but we can just go through and start deleting and pushing and pulling faces out. Um, obviously this one will have to be divided up more. So we can do something like that. We want to delete that so we'll add in another one over here. And then it's a matter of kind of, well, this should come across a bit more and spreading it out a bit so this is one way of doing it obviously you could model it up properly as a solid body um absolutely no problem with that um because like now it's a matter of like how do we join these together so we still need that straight extrusion you know this might even be better to do as a big hole and then we come through and extrude one section to the other um so maybe, maybe I'll even just do that um, because that might actually be simpler. So as much as I am kind of just rushing through this, having a plan is always a bit better. Um, so we've got it all nice and even. And what we want to do is take out a relatively large section. So we'll just add those um, edges back in there. And if that will let me, I'll add in another one back over here. And we'll do the same on this. If I'm smart, I can just turn on both sides and that'll just copy that across. So now when we come in and delete these faces, we've got a larger hole there. And what we wanna do is run that same sort of bridge command um, from there to there. That one seemed to run smoother. 
um, so that's fine we've got that and now all this section needs is a little bit joining from here to here um, so I might actually run a bevel because what I want to do is get a little section in the middle that I can push um, an extrusion across um, and right now this line's in the middle so by running the bevel that's going to delete that middle line and put one on either side of it like that and now we can look at deleting maybe just this single one on each side and bridging across from that um, so this is where you know just kind of knowing what the tools are going to do kind of gives you a bit of an advantage um, so something like that all right so that's kind of like a really rough basic I would dare to say it looks a bit ugly um, but it's mine, I've designed it, it's, you know, we want to be able to model up our own stuff. So, um, try and make your own buckle, make it actually look good um, and really nice. And I will just kind of make a couple little adjustments because I feel as though I must. Um, by just playing around with the shape and making it look a bit neater, rounder on the edges. Um, again, these should probably be symmetrical to both sides over there, but we can just pull that down, something like that, whatever. It's not really too big of a deal. And then you can always just run a, um, if this will give me control again, we can just run a, um, repair body on it or a body rebuild it will just uh I, sorry i make uniform it should just straighten out some of those edges sometimes i have to roll back and forth for this to update properly but yeah so like that that didn't look as wonky a minute ago so you know what i'm going to ignore that repair body and just get rid of it because this is fine um i mean if you were to submit this, I probably wouldn't say it's fine, but for, for this practice, I think it's fine. Um, so we're just going to roll with that. Otherwise, I'll be here forever uh, modeling up this obviously amazing thing. And you know what? The whole thing's just a tiny bit too big, so I'm just going to grab everything. And if you grab that middle one, you can just scale it down a bit. So just oops, a quick comparison to the original. Roughly the same sort of shape, that's fine. Um, and now we just want to position it maybe a bit better on the cheek. Um, and obviously one thing that's missing from this is the, oops. Okay, so because uh, that's one thing to note, um, this has symmetry turned on. So if we try and rotate it around that symmetry, um, while we don't have it all properly selected, it's going to kind of wig out and we just want to make sure that we've got the right part selected here so we can control the whole body. Like right now it says one T-spine body. If it was selected by each individual face, um, we might have a bit of a problem. Um, it's actually a little awkward to kind of figure out. But I'm sure we'll get there. So maybe somewhere along there. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because this is someone else's face and, well, it doesn't really matter. So we can just hit finish form and check to see how that looks if it is protruding through. Okay, so that obviously has to be tilted a bit more. So I'll just go in and tweak that. Um, that is kind of tilting that across oddly. Um, so we can then even play around with some of the different views we have for, you know, operating in the view space. It'll rotate it based on our view, um, which can work kind of well. Did that even tilt? Okay, so something like that looks a bit better. Let's just check. Yeah, okay, so that looks fine. Um, I don't know if it's too far forward or not. Um, maybe we need to then rotate it based on this bottom bit just to straighten it up again. So we'll just quickly go in. Obviously you can spend a huge amount of time doing this, um, but 
you know what, I'm just going to call that there and say that's excellent. And obviously this would, you would run a split command through this to give it that kind of look of a buckle. It should have a little button, something like that. Um, but at this point we're just going to say that's fine, that's how we can start modeling up our buckle. Um, Again, just model it up over in the right place. Um, so going back to our references, we want to have something like this. Maybe not this one where it's bunched up, but um, one like this can look pretty cool where it's like coming through some sort of clip. Um, it's harder to see on that. This has that same sort of weird clip going on and like this one as well. Like it looks like it's adjustable, it's got the double straps going all the way. The other kind is where it's more of a, I'll try and find an example where it's like double loops. Um, that can look good, it's a bit bulky, and then it, like these just come and wrap right around onto that. Um, but these ones that seem to come into the double clip come up past this weird backing plate. Um, so we'll have a look at getting one of these backing plates on. And again, this isn't going to be the end all way to do it. This is just me playing around with the features and showing how you can go about modeling some of this up. Because, well, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how I do it. It matters how you do it and how you learn how to do it. So I'm just going to save that. Fusion likes to play up, I think, when I'm recording. All right, so... How do we get something like that going across the back of the head? Because our straps come from up here, go through there, and then come down here into some sort of joiner and then pull in. As we can sort of see this going on, it comes up through the back. And it looks like it might pass through a little plate on that. It's, it's really hard to tell sometimes, um, but like on that one, you can see, I think it does go through a little loop to help pull that in, unless that just screws in from the back. So maybe it doesn't, um, doesn't really matter at this point. I'll just draw them across the back here. So um, yeah, we wanna look at how we can get that going. And um, surprise, we can use the face command and we can do the whole object snap where we just start snapping across the back of the head. Um, so I think this is set to the back. And, you know, looking again at our reference images, this one of the uh, female from the side, it's kind of, uh, it seems to be in line with the ear, then goes up. If we have a look down here, again, it's kind of in line with the ear and goes up and over. Um, so that's probably something we want to look at. I think I'm realizing my helmet's like definitely a bit too close here, but that's all right. Um, so we want something that comes from around here and then just sweeps up into the body. Um, so maybe I'll just make it really basic for now and just start like that. And we can, if I actually turn off um, our main body, so sometimes you gotta turn this off before you actually come into, I'll just select all of these and hide them. And that's gone ahead and shown all the ones that were hidden. All right, so I can do that. And now when I edit this, it yeah gives us you know a view of the head without clipping into the body, which is good. Um, and what we can do is just continue on, make sure object snaps always on, turn on edge, and then we can come in and bring this in. Now they do seem to like kind of get really thin as we go. Um, so we can just kind of do something like that. Doesn't have to be perfect by any means, especially at this point. Um, especially for me, because it's just a demonstration. Um, but if we go something like that, and again, checking all of our stuff, it comes up to around that sort of level above the strap. So maybe we'll bring it out even further like that. We can see it's contouring to the head quite well. We can turn on our uh, box mode and I'll turn off box mode, sorry. And we can see that's going around. We can get out of this and reshow our sort of main bodies. Like here's just the foam section. So that's fine to look at. Um, because we were warping it to the body, it has pulled it in or to the head, sorry. It's pulled it in a bit further. 
Um, so we can use this now as a reference. Um, you might actually find you can get away with just um, scaling it outward slightly like that. Uh, a lot of the time that will pull it out um, or we can do some basic movement as well. Something like that. Again, it doesn't have to be like super tight on the head. They're meant to be adjustable. Um, the user's meant to have control of exactly how it fits to their head. Um, so here I would probably just want to actually lower down some of these sections so we can see more of it. Um, in fact, I might just actually drop the whole thing down like that and pull these faces into sort of like, you know, make it follow the actual curvature of the helmet a bit more. So bring that up across there, that there. Yeah, maybe we want to bring this one down. Something like that. So we've kind of got this flow going on. Um, we don't want our shapes to look too wonky. We generally want them to follow on from one another. Um, I can't attest to how comfortable this would be. I can't remember the last time I wore a bicycle helmet. Um, it's not really my thing. Um, so we can do that. And, you know, maybe this back section needs to be a little bit bigger. Um, first, what we want to do is generally straighten that out. And we can stretch it to make it bigger, but it doesn't really matter at this point. What we really want to do is get it going on the other side as well. So we can duplicate this um, with symmetry. Um, come across like that. So now it's on both sides. And... Then we want to just bridge across. We can also just um, bring this across. If we hold in Alt, we can drag it. And if we get it close enough to say like the midpoint, um, it can be really hard to tell sometimes. That was pretty close actually. Um, when we mirror it with symmetry, um, if we've got weld turned on, sometimes we can get them to join together. So obviously we have to then select a face like that. Um, so they're overlapping and it's got 0.1 of a mil. If we actually bring that up to like one mil, I think it might actually try and join them or maybe even five mil. Okay, so even like five mil, you can see um, going back to one, these two points were close enough to join, but these weren't on zero, 0.1, neither was close enough to join, so they're more than 0.1 mil away, but on 5 mil, bang, or 6. So that's just a good way of joining those up, if you want. Um, and if I look at this from the back, maybe we just want to add in some more detail because our shape kind of curves up like that. Um, so maybe we want to mimic that. And when we edit this, we want it to follow along that path. So we're pushing and pulling in the right sort of direction here. Um, and we can grab these and pull it down. I don't know. It kind of looks weird, but we're going to roll with it. And now we've got this type of strap on the back. Um, this will be our little plastic extrusion. Um, generally they're like really light looking. Um, so there's a couple things we could actually do here. Um, if we go back and edit this, we can look at, um, sort of hollowing it out. So we can draw in, um, or insert edges along this. Um, sorry, that's merge edge. So if we insert an edge, double click that, uh, like 0.2, it's gonna bring in another edge where we can sort of delete across. Um, the problem is it does it um, sort of relative to the space here. So it's not gonna bring it across very evenly. Um, we can do something like running a pipe across the outside. Um, so what we can look at doing is going for a pipe command. And if we select the outside there, we just want to change our level down to like one or something like that. Um, 
we can see that it's going to kind of um, try and blend a pipe across here if it will allow us. I can't tell if that came out rigid because we did it in the box mode or not. Let me delete that. Um, let's try that again. Yeah, so then that comes out really smoothly. Um, you can come through and add in sections and what it'll do is try and join them all together as well. So if you have these set up in a way that you really like them, you can just kind of go through and put these in. Um, maybe it's not like the best looking thing. Um, generally you want to give it a lot of tolerance on the curvature. Um, maybe not that much. That's relatively large tolerance um, because then you might find that these blend together quite well. Um, maybe, yeah, see so that's doing something very weird across the back, but it almost kind of works um, just because of the way some of these look like they should stretch across. Obviously, it's a bit much for us, so we can just turn these down and see what happens. Okay, so something like that. You know, you could imagine it could be something like that. You can connect some more of these lines up. You can, you know, really do whatever you want. Or um, we could almost go back to how we had it when we were bridging our foam sections across. So we can pipe uh, the outer diameter of this. Oops, sorry, not the outer diameter, the outer path. Um, where we do something like this and we come in and delete a specific amount of sections. Um, so we'll put in much less across, so we reduce the density. Um, that's gonna give us a more natural curve as well. And we don't really need end types on it because we're probably just gonna find a way to join these ends up or if we actually add to our path there and add to our path there. That's gonna actually round out quite nicely, I think, when it gets around to it. And Fusion's crashed. Um, thanks, Fusion. I'm just gonna open that up and see if it saved any of that. Um, This has been known to happen. Um, I expect you'll probably encounter a few sort of crashes trying to run advanced freeform tools. Um, this laptop I'm using is meant to be set up for CAD. Um, so I can imagine on things like, you know, I've had students that seem to have a lot more crashes on Macs. Um, yeah, so let's just have a look at the time. Uh, 11 a.m. Okay, so they're absolutely nowhere near the current time of filming. Um, so that means we probably didn't get any sort of backup. So let's just have a look at what we have. I did save it after we did the sort of chin strap thing, or the clip. So let's just see what happened. All right, so lost a bunch of progress. Um, that does happen. I'm just gonna model this up and maybe I'll just fast forward through a bunch of it till we get to where we were before.
One of the things we can actually do here as well is run the pool command. Um, I didn't mention that before, um, where we can select a bunch of T-spline vertices and it'll auto pull them to the nearest body. Um, this can be really useful for just reshaping things to the head. If it wants to catch up. So we did this when we were creating our original base for the helmet, um, sorting out the main foam sections and all that. We could model it up, change it, and then pull those faces back to the body. Um, so we can just strain it up like that. And well, we're already pretty much back where we were before. I'm just I'll just modify them by hand because that is taking a while anyway. And what I'm going to do is when it gives me the chance, I am going to save that because that's what we should always be doing. We should always be saving because well, it crashes. It's been known to happen. And once that updates, I can finish my form, put on the main body again, and where are we? We can readjust to suit it. So, just grab this section, pull it back up. Mm, something like that. And we can say we're relatively happy with that. If we're not, that's okay. Um, something like that. All right, so what we want to do is try and run that pipe command again um, and look at maybe bridging up some of those surfaces. So what we'll do is create, uh, we'll actually hide some things that I don't need so it doesn't have to calculate any more than necessary. Um, I will hide this whole group of bodies should help. All right, so what we can do is create pipe, chain sections, chain selections on, go through sometime, chain section doesn't really matter, doesn't care, and we can go two mil, and we want to make fewer segments because we don't need a lot of them, and we can go, okay. All right, so that seemed to work a lot better. And what we can do is select it and turn it to that kind of mode. These edges get a bit weird. Um, that is just kind of par for the course when you're playing around with edges like this. Um, you know, deleting edges. Like if you've got another one running in the middle, you could maybe delete those outer ones. Um, and that might actually round it out a bit more because we don't have to deal with it. So we can even have a look at that. Um, so if on here we insert an edge halfway across, we can look at removing and seeing what it looks like when we run a pipe on the whole thing like that. Yeah, so we can get something like that, which rounds out a bit better at the front. I don't know, maybe we can go for that. Um, but again, we want to run it with, uh, we could run it with less um, edges, but it doesn't really matter. So what we want to do is turn that off um, and we can have a look at maybe bridging some sections or we could have, you know, we could thicken this out and cut out some sections of it. Um, so once we're back in the main modeling, we can actually, I guess that's made up of a bit of a couple sections. So, um, we can actually thicken this and cut components out of it. So like thin it out using sketches. Um, so what we can do is we'll hide our solid here and create a sketch. We have to, our sketch is shown, yep. So we can create a sketch. We can project the outer parts here like that. Um, we can run an offset off those. 
Вот. Okay, so it doesn't want to run an offset on that, apparently. Um, we can do something like um, cut out some circular shapes from it, and we can pattern them along this path, maybe. Um, at this point, it really doesn't matter. It can be on you. Um, as a pattern on the path, you got to do as a feature. So what I can do is just grab a bunch of these out and roughly position them along. So we can kind of go and start hollowing it out in different ways or, you know, we could even delete this hole in a face section. Um, maybe from the rear, what we can do is, um, you know, delete a big section here so it looks like it's hollow and on purpose. Maybe we'll do that. Um, I'm not really fussed. So we can just go with maybe an ellipse. We kind of want something that'll maybe vaguely fill out some area over here. And we can come and maybe take another section out of the middle. So we can mirror, mirror line. Can we just select a center axis on this? Yes, we can. Um, you know, maybe we want to just offset that up if it will allow us to this time. Um, sometimes Fusion is a bit picky on its offset. See, like, that's working. So we can come up here. We can do the same for up here. Project that. Offset. Come all the way down. Then we can do something like run a trim command. Um, That just went and trimmed just about everything out of it. So let's go trim. That's going to get rid of that. We can then do it over here and then, oh, maybe we'll even just chop out this middle bit once it's done. Save a bit of time. Chop that out. We can just straight up delete a face. So we're looking at hollowing this out. Ignore that weird sketch that's in there. We'll just hide that for now. Cool. Um, you know, you can imagine punching out holes, but I'm just going to skip that because it's going to take a while. Um, so then we can do something like thicken it, right? Um, and that will be in create, thicken. And we can go symmetric by... 0.2 or 0.4 I'm not sure how thick this would actually be and maybe what we want to do is actually join it to this so that's going to join it to this body we'll be able to run like a nice fillet over here so it might actually look like a somewhat decent molded component um, we can blend in these edges because obviously they look a bit ridiculous I think the takeaway from all of this weird modeling and all these weird shapes is that you should have a plan. Um, you should model things up properly. Um, but in this case, I am just sort of showing how these things can kind of look. Yeah, so we might have a problem right in here trying to fillet that out. Um, maybe we can get away with a caudal fillet. Maybe not. Maybe it'll crash every everything. Uh, yeah, okay, it doesn't like it. Doesn't matter. I probably would have modeled that up a bit different anyway. Um, so we can say, you know what, this is going to be our uh, awesome adapter. Uh, not adapter, our sort of um, rear strap adjustment, adapt adjuster. Um, so we also kind of want to visualize what that adjuster section might look like. I know some of these are really complicated setups where it pulls them in together. 
um, like it pulls that in and it pulls that in. Um, so we can just visualize that roughly with um, a cylinder that has some sections cut out from it. Um, so we want to just make something that's roughly the right sort of size. Um, it might be oversized or it might sit within it. Generally you'd want it easy to control by hand. So being 20 mil, maybe we want it 35, 40 mil. Doesn't really bother me at this point. Um, and we would want it to be at least like a centimeter thick or something like that. Obviously in real life it would be hollow. Um, and it would weigh a lot less and be very easy to control. So simply what we wanna do is put some sort of grips on it and then round out some edges. So we can do that um, by, um, you know, there's heaps of ways we can do that. Um, maybe I'll actually do some big sort of chunky cutouts. Um, so we can just go from here, we'll hide this other body and we'll just put something up the top here and we'll just make that 10. We'll just make sure that is coincident with that vertical axis. So we're chopping out from there. We can then just extrude the form Okay, what's the profile? And come in and, you know, we can even put like a taper on it. So it looks a bit neater. Where is that angle going? Something like that, doesn't really matter. And then we just wanna mirror it around. So we'll just mirror that feature and oh sorry we don't want to mirror it we want to circular pattern feature and can we select that as an axis we can so maybe we'll get seven going and we can get that going so now it looks like some weird chunky thing that we can actually start to get some um, real grip on when we adjust it um, and we can just come in and grab all of these. And something like that. Then it's a matter of just blending in those outer edges and the back. So just by simply creating a cylinder and cutting it at an odd angle, um, it makes it look like it's, well, something you might actually be handling. Um, is that going to go all the way around now? It isn't, that's annoying. Oh, maybe we can just select the whole face here. Okay, so that's working out. That's fine. We can go with that. You can maybe put your logo on the back of that or something to make it look right. Um, again, this should have some sort of split in it and this yellow, this green color is really frustrating me. So I'm going to make this look just gray and maybe we'll bring that red onto that and we will move we just want to make sure we're moving the body and then it's just a matter of matching it up somewhere where it looks somewhat right and on our actual proper one we would probably put like another piece down the middle to look like it's actually um, sitting on it and able to adjust it properly um, but for now, I think that's fine. I think you can understand what details it does and doesn't have. Um, so we go through and show in the rest of our body. We can see that's starting to kind of look like it might work. Um, it's probably, yeah, it's colliding with the head in a few points. So I would probably just adjust the form very slightly by expanding it a little bit, um, but that's fine. And now we've got our buckle down here which is red and not green, thankfully. Um, now we can look at bringing in that a nice straighter buckle, a nice straighter strap, a strap that'll come down from here and um, join up with that. 
So, I mean, uh, maybe that angles off again for how we want the straps to join up, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and not get into that too much. So, again, very similar to how we were playing around with them in the last video. What we wanna do is work pretty much just on the head, because um, we can get it starting from somewhere up here, it's starting from somewhere up there, then when we show our helmet, we can adjust them. Um, it's just gonna save a bunch of effort when it comes to um, being able to snap to the body. Um, the only other thing we're kind of missing is a actual uh, connector. So if we go back to our examples, um, we can see these types here, where it then, you know, so this looks like it's actually got one strap that comes down loops in there comes back comes up through here and then loops up to the other side um or something like that it's hard to tell um i'm just going to do it simply one strap comes into here one strap comes into here then i'm probably just going to cheat and have one single strap coming down from there um i'm sure you can all figure out different ways of doing it that might work and look better in renders and you know what i'm going to rotate this again that way some more just so it looks a bit more natural for this to come down on top of it and we'll just tuck it a bit further under the chin maybe i need to actually go ride a bike and figure out how this works um, but for now that should be fine um all right so we can even actually, I think if we make this unselectable, we should be able to control it. So, I mean, like, you know, snap to the head and not that. Let's just have a look and see if that actually works when we're in free form. So, object snap. Um, did we accidentally turn that one off as well? We should be able to snap to the head at least. That seems to be of an issue. Um, let's turn those off in case it was just freaking it out because there was no selectable bodies in the main thing. It seems like Fusion's having its own issues again, um, which has reminded me to try and say, okay, so it's had some issues trying to create a auto save file so what that means is I should definitely run a save and I'm also going to cheat a little bit and just bring this across again and modify it slightly to make it into that buckle so it doesn't really relate to any of this so we can actually just do it down in here so we can copy that and paste it and just kind of try and position it vertically. Translate it in the world space because we're just trying to get it roughly where we want it. And really for something like this, we can just kind of get rid of this top section or we could get rid of almost all of it and just hollow out the middle. Um, so this is where that symmetry can start to play up where we might not want it to. Um, yeah, I don't know, maybe we want to cap these, have this hollow and for some reason we want to show our strap coming from down here as well. Maybe we'll just do that. Um, so we can look at patching up this face over here. Ah, that's what it was, I had edge turned on and not simple. There's always something. Um, so just delete these so we can get the same amount of faces here to here. And what will work best? Oh, that's already screwing up. Um, maybe what will work is just um, 
Yeah, okay, so we can just run even just a basic bridge from one side to the other and then merge those edges. One there, one there, and we want it to have two faces. So it'll do that. Uh, we can see because we've got this dark line here, these aren't attached properly. So if we move that off there and that off there, we can see they're not touching. So what we have to do is just weld those vertices. So from there, come to that. There, come to that. Depends on which one you select first, which direction it's going to head off. And then I've got this. And um, this probably should be a bit small. I think almost all of this hardware should be a bit smaller as well. Um, so I will just scale it down a bit. Um, it shouldn't be bigger than an E. Um, but again, I think this person might have small E's. Not that there's anything wrong with that. And so we can insert across there. Maybe what we want to do as well is turn on symmetry because it's going to be symmetrical. Um, and it is going to be symmetrical in two ways, which is really handy for modeling something like this up. So if we come across 0.5, delete that. This should have the same deal going on. Insert edge 0.5, delete that delete that and now it's just about sort of joining these intersections up this should have a point running across here so we can add that in something like that delete that and now it's just about bridging these sections up so our um, what is it strap can pass through them and maybe we just want to push this in closer to that face. I think if we turn on that, it'll go in the right direction. Yeah, so it's nice and well, relatively thin. And we kind of want this bottom one to be in line with the rest of it as well. Like that, I can pull this across here. Just basically straightening some of this stuff out. So as much as, you know, I think you should all know how to do this, sometimes it can be helpful just to see the weird ways of modeling stuff up. There's not one right way, I don't know, you know. This would probably be easier just to model up as a solid body from a side profile and then cut some holes through it. But I like to try and practice my freeform skills. I've never modeled a buckle or anything like that in freeform, so I might as well do it now. And that's blending together nicely. And if we run another bridge from there to there, should pull that out. Yeah, and it's blending together relatively nicely. So that's going to put our loops on display. I, something like that. And I mean, yeah, now this is just looking way too small. So I will just rescale that whole thing back up a bit. Mm, somewhere there. Maybe. It should be wider to suit that. Um, really helpful if you've got a bike helmet, because then you can just measure stuff. Um, I don't have the luxury of owning a bicycle. Um, mainly because I don't want to. So, we can do something like that. Um, there, and finish, and then when it comes forward, we've still got that all there and we'd probably actually want to make sure we mirror it to the other side. But overall that looks neat enough, kind of looks right, relatively in the right sort of spot. I might find that we are pinching the ear a bit. Um, so we'll see how we go, because this is going to come down and around here. So having a look, um, how do these look on actual people like this is way lower this is on the chin sort of thing uh that's kind of there so what i will do is drop it and pull it back a bit more um, so it's this one so i'm just going to do that and well suit it to the body bring it in bring it down something like that i don't know um that should be fine. Make it red because red is cool. 
and just so that when we edit our materials later all of these ones change at the same time um, so yeah obviously we want to get one of these going on the other side too so we can just mirror it at this point now body mirror plane like that um, so yeah I don't know how symmetrical this head is or you know so we can see again now from this angle this whole thing just needs to rotate a little bit more and it should be pretty good um, all of this is going to look fine without the head when we render it anyway and we're not going to be rendering the head um, generally I find those renders to just they just look creepy um, so it's not really my thing um, if you really really want to show the head you're welcome to um, but meh, up to you so um, if we just hide a lot of these bodies we don't want to play around with we can get back to um, modeling in our straps so we'll go with a face we'll go simple object snap we've got our face head thing going on here again um, yeah we can't show those original bodies but that's fine and maybe we want to actually work outwards from here um, who knows just so we get that actual size right and we kind of immediately want to start pulling this off to the side in one direction and um, what we can do is copy and paste it and we'll hide one of these so we'll pull up in one direction on one of them and then we'll go in the other direction in the other and hopefully that'll look nice and convincing um, not that we're trying to trick anyone but we are trying to trick people into thinking it looks right um, so we come up we hope it goes really nicely across the head like that and based on those images I saw these do come up relatively sort of straight um, so that's fine for that point if we just turn on our thingo yeah that looks all right it looks like maybe it's getting a bit tighter up the top so what I'm going to do is grab these ones and what I'll do is slide the edge so this will just bring it oh no we can't slide it inward sorry um, what I'll do is edit it and just pull it in a bit more so that looks relatively consistent which is good so we've got that now we hide that we show our other one and this is where we bring it up off to the back um, if memory serves me we should be coming up around here and then coming up to the top um, so let's just guess and hope it all works out if this crashes again I'll be very disappointed um, but it seems alright so we might have to play around with how this one exits out over here already um, but it kind of comes out the back like that and we kind of sometimes we might actually want to rotate our camera around a bit because we'll probably find that yeah these are stretching um, depending on the sort of perspective you take and obviously we want to keep these as equal as possible um, I don't know, maybe something like that. Oops, probably shouldn't have finished form, but okay, we can see for some reason these have just pulled straight into the head. Um, that one's kind of all right. We'll pull that out anyway before we thicken it. And okay, so that obviously was positioned pretty good there, but started to snap back in. So we just want to come in and modify it, but I am also, pardon me, I am also going to show uh, this so we can mold it around the back of that and if I can find a piece of foam like that we'll just make sure we're getting the right contact through there so yeah so this will be coming up through the bottom here and we just want to start pulling them out so that we kind of get more of a natural flow between down here and there so just go into the world space just these. This might actually be easy to do in box mode as opposed to um, yeah so box mode really good for just trying to like make sure it's all in the right spot 
um, I find doing it in the free or the, what do they call it? Smooth mode, something like that. Um, in the smooth mode, it can, it can be really hard to just get those basic things right sometimes. So we can come through here. We will need to just pull these out so it blends in a bit easier. Uh, kind of like that. And these ones seem to be pulling straight into the head for some reason. So we can just pull them back and out a bit more like that. That should be pretty fine. And now we just kind of want to even these out. I don't know if there's a command to try and make these even. It would be nice if there was, but um, we can just kind of wing it. So we do that. We'll bring that one up and in a bit. And just on this axis, so what we can do is select our points and pull them down. So making sure we've got the right um, workspace tools selected. We want to just even these out a bit more. So when we look at it, that looks relatively good. Pretty smooth. Um, this does seem to be coming out a bit too far now. Something like that's fine. Maybe we'll have to move this whole thing back a little bit later. And where it comes up here, we just want it to just kind of end up in this sort of area. Maybe we'll bring it out a bit more. Um, maybe someone who rides bikes can tell me if this is any good or not as well. Um, so then for this one, we've got that same sort of deal where we want this to be closer in like that. That one can be a little further out because we don't want it to come in too flat. And we're just going to do that straightening out. Pull it away from the head just a little bit. Yep, and we want it to end somewhere in here because we're actually going to run one of these um, uh, little plastic... Uh, where are they? It's somewhere. Like one of these plastic things. We can make one of these up. I know this is starting to drag on for a bit. Yeah, it's going for over an hour, but that's okay because there's plenty of stuff to do. Um, so with something like that, that looks like they both kind of go in there relatively nicely. Um, I might have to just tweak them a bit more, but you know, we want things to look somewhat natural as well. And for this part, what I'm actually gonna do is show that, what does that do? That's the other buckle, that's fine. Um, I'm actually just gonna move this back in here just a bit, so 1.8 mil that way. And now that's not colliding. We may have to move it again after we thicken it, but it's looking pretty good. Um, now this is that part where, so we might even just move this whole um, section, this mirror across. So if the mirrors at the end here, we'll be able to mirror um, the straps also, which would be really handy because we're gonna thicken the straps, we're gonna, you know, we could fill it in and all these things. And the top half of the strap should be the same. And it's the bottom ones that are going to be different where here joins to here and over there joins to over there. Um, so, you know, try and think about how to minimize the amount of stuff you have to do. And so what we want to do now is thicken these out. So we can just grab that and we probably want that to go one-sided and we want it to go that way so negative 0.8 seems like a good distance and this one as well can we think in two things at once we can that's pretty good so we do that and we see that starting to look pretty cool i think um, it looks somewhat natural maybe you can spend more time straightening them out and just for my own sake i'm just going to throw that gray fabric on them so they're not green. Um, I think what that actually did was join them together um, because they overlap. That's fine. Um, it may be a problem when it comes to sort of filleting these edges later if you're gonna do that. I'm not going to do that at this point in time, so it doesn't bother me. Um, and again, like, yeah, these little bits. So you might wanna just come in and um, grab that and 
push it in a bit more. Um, so like when it does thicken out, it'll still look fine, but now it's just not clipping through as much. Um, so something like that's pretty good for there. And now when we run our mirror, again, we want our mirror to be after our thicken, um, quick save because we don't know what's going to be breaking next. And when that's ready, yep, um, we can just edit our mirror function and add in um, and add in our straps. I just hit enter right away, which was a bad idea. So let's try that one more time. So we're going to get edit feature. Um, you might have to hold in control. So sometimes when you're trying to add an additional selection, it won't let you until you hold in control. Um, that's just the way it is. Um, it's not really a big deal, but now we have it mirrored on this side. We've got the second body showing. It all lines up, which is great. And now we just want to create these links from one of these to the other. Um, and I did, I think I did mention that these should be split as well with maybe like a little thumb groove. Maybe I'll run a quick split through them. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much a matter of joining these up now. So um, we can do something like uh, snapping to, obviously we can snap to the faces again and it might be good just to do like the little sections here or we could um, actually try and start from in here. So I can't tell if that's actually gonna work or if that's snapping to the head. Um, it's actually twisted them up, which is annoying. Sometimes it's hard to tell which one it's going to do. But if I bring that across there, we can see... Yeah, so, meh. This might just be easier to kind of position yourself. Um, doesn't really matter too much how you go about it. So, fortunately, we've got this big blank area in here. So, we can start our new one in um, kind of wherever we want. And it's just about now making sure it lines up with this bottom section. And once that's all looking pretty good, um, sometimes you have to control and click the middle mouse button or shift and middle mouse button to get that green point and that'll set where you're gonna rotate about. Um, and then we just wanna pull that out there. Okay, so we can see that's in the middle. That's a little bit out of the middle like that, and now we can look at pulling this down from here and starting to wrap it around our chin. So something like that. And, you know, we might even want to go all the way to our end point straight away. Um, this will make sense in a second, um, because what we want to do is run that sort of loop again where we go from the inside down over and out the back. And what we can achieve by coming straight to the end with this is um, we can add in some curvature in here later. Um, but once our endpoints are set, we don't have to kind of go back and redo it. Uh, so we'll see how that exactly works in a minute. This has to curve up more here come out there and we get that sort of dangle out there. This has to adjust, wrong adjust. And we just want to straighten up some of these bits. So it can be awkward trying to figure out which sort of um, view mode to adjust it in and what kind of um, settings to use for that. It can really be awkward and we just want to make sure this kind of drops almost straight down really um, because well, gravity. Um, so something like that kind of looks all right. It looks a little rough or a little strict on the inside here. Um, so that's where we can add some curvature by coming across to here and inserting an edge halfway across. Uh, and this is how we can kind of nicely mold it to the face. So we do something like that, bring it down like that. And we can see it's got a bit nicer of a curvature there. Um, if we come from the bottom, we may have to straighten some of this out. So 
we can just pull that across and pull that across. We probably want everything sort of perpendicular, uh, parallel, sorry, to our main body. These are a tiny bit off like that. So it just is a matter of straightening them out. And again, sometimes you might find going to the box mode really does help. So you can do that. You can even run like a smooth command on it or something. Um, but that kind of looks right, I think. Um, we might need another one here just because this is pulling away too soon from there. So we can go to that and type in 0.5. Uh, that went the wrong way. That's actually kind of fine because that does help there as well. So let's just go negative 0.5, do that and we want to pull this away a bit to make it look like it's drooping down more. All right, so that side's good. I'm just gonna hit save on that. So we've done that and what we wanna do is copy it to the other side. Um, so yeah, we can just copy this because we know the start's gonna be relatively the same. Um, so this is where we use mirror duplicate across like that. Um, we just have to make sure that we then clear our symmetry. Otherwise, when we change this, it's gonna modify that and we certainly don't want that. So we can just select from about, well, where this actually changes drastically from there to there delete that and now this starts off really well which, which is obviously excellent and we can just start pulling this down around the chin kind of roughly obviously it'll probably need some sort of modifications um, so we come from the bottom and now we just tweak it to make it actually suit like that and we want it to probably fill up as much of that as possible Again, trying to keep all of these somewhat consistent in width. Otherwise, our fabric's going to magically stretch and shrink as we go. Um, this looks really janky. So if we can smooth that out like that. Um, it does look a little thick there, so maybe we'll just open that up a bit. And we can see that's looking pretty good. And it's just a matter of looping this down and up or if it comes from the bottom and goes over um, I don't really know it doesn't really matter so we can just pull that in do that bring it across and the idea is that it sort of stitches back up on there um, these would just be lined up probably quite nice like that and we can bring that over and rotate it a bit. So now we've got this, which will extrude outwards and look pretty good. It is clipping slightly here. We can just bring that down a tiny bit. Um, it's clipping slightly here as well, so we can bring that up a tiny bit. But that should probably work for um, creating our straps. Now, this one's actually got to thicken out that way. Um, and this one's got to thicken out that way as well. So we might find we have some issues um, with how these collide together. Um, I think in the last one it actually worked out a bit easier, but we can just have a quick look. So what I'm going to do is just run a thicken. And what was the number? It was negative 0.8. So we just want to make sure that it works. So I see that it is having an issue because it won't let me press OK. Um, and that's because it is um, colliding with itself. So when we do go to point eight, we find that it then actually starts clipping back in the top here. And this isn't that close to touching. So that's really gonna come down to um, being a bit more finicky with the model um, and how you model it up. I'm gonna leave it because otherwise I'll sit here forever adjusting it. 
um, and I'm just going to do the same for this one. So create thicken, and that's going to work, which will be nice. And that thickens out like that. So now if we chuck our fabric on it, we can see that our sort of strap system's looking a lot better than the really basic type. Um, obviously not perfect by any means, but it is um, a significant improvement. Um, what am I doing? Close that and hide that head. So yeah, significant sort of improvement. Um, we do want to kind of maybe even pull these into the bot, into the um, foam. So right now this is um, on the head and not on the helmet. So, you know, we can come in and just pull these back slightly. Um, specifically making sure we're not um, coming through the bottom of it, but connecting up at the top. So we can pull them in um, and have them clip through. That's not really a big deal. Um, we can have that come out a bit lower like that. And then over on the back here, we just want that to make some contact with the helmet. Something like that. Just so it looks like it's gonna blend in a bit nicer. We can run a little bit of, like see that looks like it's actually going in there, which is pretty good. Uh, that one could be better. Um, so from here, even though we seem to be about an hour and 20 minutes in, that's all right. I'm happy to keep going. Um, so we've got a bunch of stuff modeled up on it. Um, we now just want to add in little bits of details like, you know, this, which is what clips over and covers that, um, the way the strap actually connects up to the body, um, or at least that's what it seems to be. Pretty simple. So we could just simply sketch something on the side or, um, Dustin likes to do it using a plane and a line, which is really a great way to go about it. Um, I want it to kind of follow this side curvature um, of this face. So what I will look at doing is projecting this face and offsetting it and then rounding out parts of that offset. So to show you what I mean, I'll grab this, bring it down by mm, three mils fine. I will repeat by 3 mil like that. And now it's about connecting these up to each other. Um, so it looks like we've got an actually good plastic sort of connection here. Um, one of the annoying things I find about Fusion is that you can't really easily make something um, tangent. So if we select that and select that, it doesn't want to allow us to make it tangent. Um, however, if we trim it, and it looks like we've got an overlap there, um, we can actually make these tangent now, but it's going to warp that. Um, I guess you could say that's one of the limitations of Fusion. Um, we can actually fix these. Um, it still doesn't allow us to make it tangent, but it allows us to um, trim away the sections of it without moving the main body too much. So it's gonna get rid of that. Um, it is gonna get rid of that fixed feature, like now it can move, but we just have to uh, refix it. And generally I hate fixing things in this way. Um, it's one of my really big no-nos when it comes to CAD, um, mostly in SOLIDWORKS. Um, but when we're doing stuff like this and it's super free for me, um, we can go about, you know, taking a couple shortcuts. Um, the thing with an arc is that if we make that tangent there and there, that's going to lock up instantly um, and we don't have the option to make that tangent there. So we can actually just use a spline and we can come out here and do that. Well, if we don't press escape. And we hit that tick over there. 
Okay, so I'm just going to turn off 3D sketch because I got a little paranoid it was making it a 3D sketch there. Um, so we can do that and then we should be able to make that and that tangent, that and, oh, these aren't even connected. Okay, now they are. If that would... Like, I know it says it's tangent, but I just don't buy it. Um, so that's a little annoying. Let's try it again. Seems to be better there and better there. Okay, so, you know, we can get that rounded edge. I mean, we could always just put a straight edge across and fill it a shape out later, um, but... I'm just going to kind of roll with this um, and this is coming out a bit far so what I'm going to do is just go from here to here and say I'm okay with that and then I'll trim out these outside bits. I'm going to have to refix it. Again, I would like to have some sort of um, dimension control over this. If I was doing it properly for a proper design, I would use dimension controls, but I think this works fine. Um, so then what we want to do is run a split body through here. So we can just go surface, split body, body to split that. Um, we can go and split the foam as well. But first off, that's going to make it have to calculate a lot. And really all we want to do on the foam is maybe just split the face a bit anyway. Um, so we can just select our splitting tool here. That's going to do both sides, not a big deal. And if we have a look, um, you know, it, pretty flush with the surface but you might want it to actually sit out further or sit in further to make it look more like a like there's something going on um that's kind of up to you um i'm gonna make this sort of like a dark like a black plastic texture so we can have a look at how it how it um actually comes up and so we can just come down to plastic um you know, maybe I want it to have a, what's a regular texture? Uh, that looks a bit boring. That looks a bit too much like the foam. Um, so maybe what I'll do is, which one is it? Random. We'll just make it a really fine texture. So it's still there if you really look for it. Um, we'll take away some of the roughness, give it reflectance, make it dark so it looks like a type of rough plastic but somewhat shiny. Um, so it kind of looks interesting. There's a bit of model surface going on there. Um, totally up to you how you want to texture these up or paint them or whatever. Um, but then we can look at um, running a fillet across that edge just to help separate these two surfaces so if you hold in control it allows you to select the surf the edge that's directly under it as well oh, fusion's really starting to lag up here um so what we can do is select that holding control select oh, sometimes it does work sometimes it doesn't um, but then you might want to just hide a body uh, so we've got the outside uh, the inner surface selected there we want to hide that so now if we hold in control we can select our frame and we just might want to go 0.25 on that and that's going to round it out we just show that again and we see we've got this little um, break in the surface now with our lighting like that. It'll show really cool with a bit of ambient occlusion going on. 
and now they're both rounded in, we can see it's a sort of separate material there. Um, you know, maybe we want to make it stand out, maybe we want to make it the same color as the um, straps, doesn't really matter. You can imagine the same thing going on here. Um, and yeah, you can do things like, um, prior to running the fillet, you can actually um, just uh, push pull this out slightly or press pull. Um, so our fillet's like 0.25. So if we want it to pop out from the surface and the fillet blends it back in, we can go 0.25 on that. Uh, and when we run our fillet, it should kind of smooth it back in like that. So that like, you know, these little bits of just playing around with the surface um, makes it really pop um, and adds some detail to it. So that can be really useful. Um, the only other thing I wanted to look at today really briefly um, is MIPS or just um, this foam stuff. I don't know what MIPS is, it just sounds funny. Um, but this kind of foam padding we see in a lot of helmets. Um, in here we see it all the way, like on these faces, um, can actually be used to obscure where the straps go in. Um, so really briefly, sometimes we can just get away with this by, let me hide this, this sketch. Um, sometimes we can get away with it by just offsetting um, our inner faces, depending on how nicely these offsets worked. Um, so what we can do is we'll hide all of our straps and strap parts. Oh, and you know what? We didn't actually have to split um, this main bit at all here um, for the way I was doing it. it. Wasn't really necessary, so we might as well come back in and unsplit it because um, we'll probably put some foam across this surface once it loads because it is quite a heavy feature. So like that, and now we're only splitting the outside edges. Let's hope it doesn't freak out and forget which things we wanted to apply the fillets to. Nope, looks good, that's great. Just gonna quick save. All right, and nope, it's still saving. There we go. So yeah, what we might wanna do is hide all of these newer pieces um, of course you should be labeling and naming things as you go through but this is just kind of one of those rough live demos right so we do that and honestly it can be quite simple to add in some of this foam padding um, obviously my helmet being a bit sort of well very abstract in shape like this area isn't going to be as good for the padding as you would kind of hope um, so really all you have to do you can have chain selection but if you don't have a sharp edge here it's going to try and select everything um, so for me i'll just go through and select a bunch of faces around here uh, and what we're going to be doing is offsetting this um, in order to well, create that padding um, Maybe it runs all the way along the ear area and along the back. This is going to be a lot of clicks. And down across there. Did we get that in there? No, I think we missed that part. Um, so it can be something like that, um, and then even we're going to have a join up down here. Um, but generally what you're going to want is once you've got it roughly sorted out, you would hope that it's relatively smooth. Um, so right now this is going to come out really sort of wobbly. Um, you know, maybe I should have just joined that bit up and then like this thing would be almost 100% padding. Um, so we're just going to offset that as a surface with zero. So that should allow us, if we click, or we can just isolate this, it's going to give us this big surface thing here. Um, 
and what we can do is when we actually thicken this we could come in and maybe uh, fillet some of these edges to make them a bit softer maybe we could um, we can even now just like run a sketch that'll smooth out some of these um, I don't know if I have a preference um, you know we can well we'll have a quick look at what works and what doesn't so if we go thicken we want to thicken it inwards it doesn't really need to be by a lot um, because a lot of this is going to be just kind of visual um, when it's going to allow me to move the camera I'll get back to you maybe um, Let's just do one of those things again, where it's trying to figure out the exact faces I selected. Even though there's only a few faces. Alright, so yeah, obviously it couldn't... Okay, so it tried to default to like that 0.8. Um, and it's already saying that it doesn't want to do it. That's not a very good sign. Um, Obviously, you'd probably want a couple mil of padding anyway. Um, and we can almost guarantee that it's one of these little tight areas um, just kind of freaking out. So, um, we might find that we have to go all the way back and create an offset of our actual inner faces from when we were making our freeform. Um, and we can kind of mold up little sections of that. That could absolutely work. Or we might find, um, so I'm just going to ignore this option for now because it would take it quite a bit of cleaning up just to be able to offset that. Um, so another way we can do it is by being a bit more careful in what we select. If I can, if I can find my main body, which might be one of these ones but it isn't, it'll be that big one. Um, what we can do is sort of create a sketch and offset certain areas. So um, let's do a, we'll do a section of this side, all right? Um, so what I'm gonna do is turn on my analysis and do I have one that cuts the model in half? I do, so this will work really well. Um, it will also run really slow because it's calculating that. If I turn off hatching, it might be a bit better. And we just want to make sure we're... Well, cutting through it directly for one would be nice. That doesn't look like it's cutting through it directly. Let's go... Like that. Alright, so that's directly through. And we're having a look here. And we might want to just offset and do a little section in here. Um, so this is going to be much like what we were just looking at before, um, where we select a bunch of faces, project them, and bring them across. Um, or it might be similar to if we look at like these, right? These are just like big, long, oval-shaped pads. Um, and you know something like that would obviously be really easy to do so by um, creating a sketch on the right plane what we can do is just go so this will probably be the easiest way to show it without having to spend um, 10 years so we can just grab this bring it across create some sort of thin ellipse And if we drag it in like that, so even something like that, it's kind of close. Like I think these edges are a bit more rounded. So maybe you want to draw it as a couple arcs with a fillet. Doesn't really matter. Um, we're just going to go through a bit of the process and then it's just a matter of splitting that face. So this face, this face, this face, and this face. And the splitting tool is going to be that that's going to do it directly across. Um, you might find that you want to actually draw a line off and create a plane like Dustin does. Um, it does give you a bit more control, um, whereas this might end up being a little wobbly. 
Um, but once that's split, what we can do is um, a bit more easily offset this surface. So chain selection, sometimes you've got to turn it off and on to make sure you're only getting that. So we can do that. Um, we can just bring it off by like 0.1 of a mil or by like, like 0.05 of a mil. It doesn't really matter. As long as it comes out solid, it'll, show, it'll render out better. Um, when you come up on like the side, it'll give that little bit of shadow. And from here, we just go thicken. We select that and, you know, maybe we want it to come out like 2 mil because it's actually quite thick, this padding. That looks way too thick. Um, so maybe just 1 mil will be fine for now. And we just pretty much want to run a fillet all the way along that. Um, sometimes it's easier to select the whole face and we just might want to go 0.75. if that worked. Yep, looks like it sure tried because um, it gives us all these little bits. Sometimes you just got to hope it works. If not, you can always run like a sweep along the edge that might just make it behave better, 0.2. It's really not liking some of this. Um, like so now these areas don't like it, that's fine. Um, like, yeah, okay, so this edge didn't come out properly tangent to that edge. Um, not too, that's a bit much. 0.25, let's see. Sometimes even playing around by changing it from a constant radius fillet to something that is um, a caudal length. So it might even be it's getting too tight up around this top area. Um, I know it's showing red lines down here, but there shouldn't be an issue with any of those sections. Um, it should just work. Yeah, okay, so there we go, like 0.2, we can do it, 0.25, we can do that. So it might be a matter of um, just finding out the right sort of way to go about it. And I think I should be able to get the inside working as well to look like it's actually like a foam um, part that's been stuck down on it. Maybe that was a bit too ambitious. But, um, <laughs> definitely too ambitious. It didn't really um, need to be there, but it's, it's those little details that really do help it um, come off as or real or better, um, more accurate, however you want to put it. Um, because we're getting to that point where we want everything to start looking like, you know, everything should have a slight radius on the edges. Um, if it doesn't, then um, it better be really crisp for a reason, just because... Um, well, just about everything in real life has a... See, like, I don't know why that's done that. Um, just about everything in real life does have a, a radius on it. Like, even looking at your, like, tabletops, your phones, your drink bottles, keyboards, mouse, like, the buttons on your keyboards aren't sharp, they're, they're rounded. Everything we've got has a slight radius to the edge, whether it's intentional or it's just part of, like, the manufacturing process, so... Um, we're getting to that point where everything should be, you know, looking quite real. Um, I know I say this as I've just got this green blob on the screen, but once that is sort of like a foamy sort of colour, like obviously here they've got this section around the edge of it and then they've got this sort of fluffy looking fabric going on. Um, you know, we can replicate that by running a pipe or sweep along the edge. Okay, maybe that would work better if I had the analysis turned off. Um, but you can see even like that, even with it following the surface, um, we can, like it doesn't even need to be a fabric. It can pretty much be one of those rough plastic textures. Um, they do kind of look pretty convincing in almost all scenarios. Um, but they had this weird light blue color going on. Yeah, definitely more blue than that, but um, 
like the scale, you know, it kind of looks a little soft. It's hard to tell when the body's that rough anyway. Um, but with plenty of roughness, meh. Maybe we need to find a fluffy type of fabric or something like that for when we actually do the rest of them. Um, however, I think we've covered quite enough in this video. There's been a lot of little bits and pieces. Um, and you find as it gets to this point where we're adding, well, what we might call realistic parts to it, so like the strap and the clips and all that, it kind of becomes more and more laissez-faire in that you can get away with a bit more in terms of it not making a lot of sense. So like where this blends in here, maybe you just want to put a little slit or something or a little back cover over it to hide that join. Um, it's the kind of things that you don't see it if I render from this angle exactly you don't see where that joins in you don't see where it joins in there but you can see most of it so it starts to look really convincing um and that's kind of how a lot of this goes uh, oh great that just hit everything again um it's kind of how some of this goes it's also about realistically when it comes to cad and stuff you know the straps aren't modeled up in this way for manufacturing they're modeled up in this way for purely for rendering. So when we do something like this for rendering, it's allowed to be um, a little untrue to the real world counterpart. Um, obviously with something like this, you want to add in the details that are left out, like something that looks like it might ratchet or whatever. Um, but, you know, compared to where we're at in yesterday's shorter video on the strap, um, it really is starting to look a lot more convincing, a lot more real. Um, again, I don't really like how light that strap is. Um, so I might change it to a black fabric and it starts looking cooler. Although I got no idea why that's coming up in lighter colors like that, but it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so this has gone on way too long. This recording's about an hour and 45 minutes. Um, so, yeah, follow through bits and pieces, practice around with the little sections um, and start applying it to your own designs. Again, if you're doing something that isn't a skate or road bike helmet, um, it's really on you to bring that level of complexity to your design. Um, if you're trying to do something that's a bit different, like a race helmet, like for a car or something, it still has to have complexity. It can't just be basic because it's different. Um, but yeah, that's really all there is for now. Um, thanks for watching.